Greetings, fellow mathematicians. For our first problem in calculating Laplace transforms, we're going to take a look at a really simple function, f of t equals 1, and we'll go through all the steps in detail. Now, there's a few topics that you'll want to review and be comfortable with first. First and foremost, make sure you know the definition of the Laplace transform. We take a function of t, and the Laplace transform is defined as that function of t multiplied by e to the negative st, and then we integrate that over t from 0 to infinity. Now, the topics from your Calc 2 course that you'll want to review and be comfortable with, first, because our integral involves positive infinity, make sure you go back and review improper integrals. Recall that we set those up as limits. For some of the harder problems, you're going to need integration by parts to evaluate integrals, but not this problem. And since we're setting up improper integrals as limits, there's some basic limits involving e to the negative st that you'll want to be familiar with. The first one here, you can understand graphically from a decreasing exponential, e to the negative st. As t approaches infinity, that approaches zero. And again, for some of the harder problems, we might have, after evaluating an integral, exponential terms multiplied by powers of a variable. You can use L'Hopital's rule to show that limit as t goes to infinity is also zero. Now first, make sure you're comfortable with these limits involving the variable t. Since we're going to be setting up our improper integrals as limits, we're going to set them up as a limit as b approaches infinity, make sure you're comfortable just replacing t here with b. So with all that out of the way, let's get to the first steps in setting up the Laplace transform for f of t equals 1. So we take our function, multiply it by e to the negative st, and integrate it over t from 0 to infinity. Now, this integral is actually not that complicated, but we do need to set it up correctly as an improper integral. So we're going to set this up, replace the infinity with some other variable, which will go with b. And then we take a limit as b goes to infinity. So we now have our integral going from 0 to b. And the function stays the same. Since our function f of t was 1, we're just integrating e to the negative st. And again, thinking back to improper integrals from your Calc 2 course, first we're going to evaluate the integral, and then we'll evaluate the limit. So let's evaluate that integral. Integral from 0 to b of e to the negative st. Now this you should be able to go through very quickly. You can either do 1, a substitution, u, as negative st, or 2, you can use what I had in a previous video called the 1 over a shortcut. Here, a, the number or quantity multiplying your variable t, is negative s. Either way, your antiderivative should come out to negative 1 over s, e to the negative st, and we're going to evaluate that from t equals 0 to t equals b. At this point, we're just going to plug in using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Nice little tip I like to include when I write this in my courses. We're going to be plugging in or evaluating for the variable t. So we're going to replace t with 0 and t with b. Just be careful not to plug those values in for s. So we're going to get plugging in b for t, negative 1 over s, e to the negative sb. Fundamental theorem of calculus says we subtract the value when we now plug in 0. Notice I'm being careful to use parentheses since there's a few negative signs. Some of you might be OK doing several steps together, but for this first one, we're taking our time and going through all the steps in detail. e to the 0 is going to be 1, and the two negatives here cancel out to a positive. So we can clean this up and rewrite it 
as this is going to be positive 1 over s minus 1 over s times e to the negative sb. All right, that is the first part. Step one, evaluate the integral. Now we can go to step two, evaluating the limit. And we're going to take the limit as b approaches infinity for this entire function here, 1 over s minus 1 over s times e to the negative sb. So we have a limit as b approaches infinity. And at this point, we now think back to some of our basic limits, going all the way back to maybe calculus 1. b is approaching infinity, so this first part, 1 over s, is constant. It's the exponential part here that contains b. As b approaches infinity, that decreasing exponential, that's going to approach 0. And it looks like what we're going to be left with for the limit here is 1 over s. Now, just to be technically correct, this term here, that only approaches 0 if s is positive. Notice if s is negative, that negative in front times a negative would become positive. And that would change it from a decreasing exponential to an increasing exponential. So just make sure you realize there are issues of convergence. Usually they're swept under the rug in differential equations and not talked about much, but this limit only exists provided s is positive. And what we find here, the limit, or our Laplace transform, comes out to 1 over s. So just to write this down in the notation that you're going to be using for Laplace transforms, we would have started with f of t as 1. And we calculated our Laplace transform of that. That comes out to 1 over s. And that is arguably the simplest Laplace transform that you could be asked to calculate. This is a good one to start with since it involves most of the fundamentals. The only thing missing from this problem is integration by parts. We're going to see that in the next problem where maybe we have some extra factors of a variable, like another factor of t there, that will require us to integrate by parts. Hope you enjoyed the video and going through some brief review topics. I'll provide links to my videos for those if you want to go back and review in more detail. Hope you're enjoying the content. If you are, like and subscribe.